Welcome to Greater Mankato Events, an online resource for all of the exciting events happening within the Greater Mankato area. Today, we will be showing you how to submit an event. First, you'll need to create an account. From the home page, click the Log In tab. If this is your first time visiting the site, you'll need to create a new account. After inputting all of the associated information with your account, in clicking Create New Account, you will be sent an email to the associated email address with a link to verify and finalize your account. Once you have clicked that link, you will be able to log into the site with your new username and password. After logging into the site, you'll be led to this screen, which is where you can review all of your submitted, approved, denied events. This edit tab here is where you can view your account information and make any necessary changes. But today we are going to show you how to add a new event, which can be accessed through this link here or in the submit events tab at the top of the screen. In the create event screen, you will find seven tabs to fill out. The first is basic info. Enter an event name, which will be the title that your event is associated with throughout the site. For event dates, you have the option of having an event be all day or a range of time on a specific date. If your event repeats, you have the option to access this repeat function, where you can select what days, how often your event will repeat, whether it be daily, weekly, monthly, or annually. You can choose to stop the repeating after a number of occurrences or on a specific day, and include any dates or exclude any dates that fall outside of those parameters. If your event does repeat, but at a different time of day, such as if you have a theater performance at 7 p.m. on Friday and Saturday night, but at 3 p.m. on Sunday, you'll have the option to clone your event after it is created and make another event with the same information, but at that different time. For event description, you should provide information that is brief, but that tells the public what to expect from your event and why they should come. Next, you'll need to enter an organization that your event is affiliated with. Many organizations are already in the system, and it's always best to check for an existing organization first. But if you end up submitting a new organization, you will provide the organization name and an optional website URL. If you believe that your organization is already within the Greater Mankato Events system, you can click Use Existing Organization. Here you'll be able to search for a new or any organization that is already within our system. To do this, begin typing the name of your organization, and it will pop up if it is within our system. Then you simply click the name and update organization. The next tab is Category. The first step is to classify whether your event is an event or a thing to do. If your event happens regularly throughout the year, such as a karaoke night, a game night, or a, the City Walk art sculptures, it will be classified within the site as a thing to do. If, however, your event is more of a one-time opportunity, such as a music concert at the Verizon Wireless Center, or a theater event happening on a particular weekend, that will be classified as an event. If site administrators believe that you have misclassified your event, they will adjust it accordingly. Next, select the categories that your event connects to. This is a way for the public to search for and thus find your event. 
And finally, check which ages are appropriate for your event. The next tab is Location and Venue. If you end up needing to add a new venue to the site, you will be asked to provide um, the name, the full location address, any notes such as um, alternatives in case of bad weather or attire, and as well as any parking information under this tab here. We also ask that you specify whether your event is located in the Mankato City Center, specifically downtown Mankato. You can also search for a venue within our system already if you believe it already exists. Again, you will just begin to type the name of your venue and select the appropriate location. We also encourage um, submissions to provide an ex a ballpark estimate of expected attendance. This information is used for area, our Area Business Chamber and Twin Rivers Council for the Arts, who uses the info for grant reporting and to show various economic impacts of different events and organizations on the Greater Mankato area. So we do encourage you to provide a ballpark estimate of attendance. The next tab is a to provide a contact point for the event. This person should be affiliated with your organization and someone be somebody who can answer any questions about the event that the public may have. Once you have begun creating more events, the contact information you provide will be listed under existing contact information. But for the first event you provide, you'll need to add new contact information. The Photos and Media tab allows you to attach visual elements to your event. Every event is required to provide a photo, which, and you can either upload your own or use an existing photo. If you choose to use an existing photo, again, you'll just type keywords associated with your event to try to find something appropriate for the public to see. You'll then update photo. Events may have multiple photos, so we will now upload one of our own. After you click add new photo, you'll be asked to provide a title that, will, that the website can associate with your photo. From here, you will choose a file from your computer and click Upload. So here it shows that our image was resized to fit within the maximum allowed dimensions. If your image does not, it's too small for the site and does not meet these size requirements, you can visit this free online tool, Pick Resize, um, and follow these instructions to resize your photo. And then you can cl click Input Photo. You'll also have the option to upload a video. If you decide to add a video from your organization, you'll click Add New Video. Again, you'll need to provide a title, and then you'll need to provide a YouTube or Vimeo video URL. So, for example, I have this YouTube video here, and then input video. And now you have a video associated with your event. You can also provide an event website if your event has a specific website with more information and upload an event brochure or flyer if one is, is created.
The final required tab is Tickets, which is where you can specify whether your event is free to the public or if there is a cost. If your event is not free, we encourage you to provide the ticket price information, which you can list here under Ticket Price Information. The site allows you to list multiple price points with attached criteria, such as in advance or at the door, or for students and children. So for example, if your event is $10 advance, and then you can and then you'll click add another price option. And then if it's we'll say it's $15 at the door. If you select that yes, that your event is free to the public, you do not need to submit this ticket price information. The final tab is accessibility, where you can check off any services available that will be at the site or at the event. And remember, if throughout this process you have any issues while creating an event, you can always click the link at the top for tips and help. Once all seven tabs have been filled out, you just have to click Save. Now you can see uh, uh, an example of what your event will look like on the site with all of the information that you just filled out. You'll have the option to edit your event further if you so choose. Now if you go back to My Events, this is where you'll be able to hit that Clone Event, which will bring you to another screen with clone of tutorial event. And this is where you can adjust the time for different dates. But again, you'll see that it has all of the same information that we had already created. So returning to my events, you can see that your, this, your new event, tutorial event, is under review by Site Webmaster. Once your event is either approved or denied, it will move over here. So now that you know how to submit an event to Greater Mankato Events, enjoy using the site, and we hope it is a good resource for you and your organization. Thank you.